This time we're um, coming back to the execution pillar and the business development aspects of, of that. And we, in, in November, we looked at lead generation matrix, and this is what we're looking at here: is the is the need to have a consistent and predictable stream of on-profile leads that we can convert then into into customers. And the, um, the we know it's important, but if we just add some data to that, you know, we've just done a bit of bit of research and. The idea, the, the the need to generate a sufficient quality of, of consistent stream of leads, was cited by forty eight percent of all businesses that we surveyed, as being one of the top five challenges that they face. And if you look at businesses up to half a million turnover, that number increases to more like 60 percent. So it is one of the key challenges that we that we have, and it's one of the key reasons why some businesses don't manage to scale beyond a certain certain point. And we all know about this typical um, peaks and troughs that we see within within our business development. You know, we get we get busy, we take our foot off the gas a little bit, then then things stop, slow down, and we need to then get that momentum going back again. So what we want to try and do is to smooth that out a little, a little bit. So there are two reasons typically um, it's that predictability that most of us struggle with and the two key reasons why most don't manage it and, and they're around first of all not focusing on a small number of lead generation activities in other words trying to do too many things um, and then that leads to not doing any of them really well at, at all so essentially what we're saying is it's better to do one thing or a very small number of things really well than 10 things poorly or averagely and and that is the that is the key really to this is if we spread ourselves too thin we will simply be average and we all know that being average just puts us in the midst of all that noise that's going on and we're not separated from it so back in november we looked at this matrix and the idea of using this to identify some a small number of tactics that will really drive the drive the business forward so um, we on the left hand side we looked at the type of activity whether it's hunting so direct targeted activities to individual companies or people but also the farming activities which are a bit more general about creating awareness and, and positioning ourselves the way we want to be positioned and then across the top the idea of the audience whether it's looking at existing customers or new customers so we can use this to brainstorm a load of ideas that we can do uh, things that we are doing uh, but maybe new things that we think actually might work but then the trick is to identify one or two things within each area that if we did really well would make a big big impact and you might find that there are things that that actually coordinate across the different aspects too so that's even better then you know so the example of the ebook here for a minute might be something that we can use with our existing customers both on a targeted thing send it to specific individuals um, as well as more general with our existing customers in a newsletter or it might be actually be something that we can use as a general lead generation tactic um, through linkedin or, or whatever else to generate new leads so you know there are things that you can do that coordinate across all of these aspects types of customers and types of activities and of course that improves our efficiency but then the question is what does really good look like so if we're going to do one or two key activities what does really good look like and that's what we want to want to think about doing so if if, if i take this example here of um, maybe a targeted email uh, sorry targeted linkedin campaign you know what would that look like so we might want to map it out in a series of series of steps so this is a summary of ours for example and this is something that caroline does very successfully to get to drive people to our online engagement events so we use sales navigator on, on linkedin to identify target businesses by searching using criteria we use something called octopus that then will go out and look at people's profiles so they can see that, that we've looked at their profile and they may want to look back but then we can start a personal message going contact contact with them ask for permission to send some information and then um and then invite them to the linkedin page get them to actually register with a private link through through zoom and and then of course we can we can follow up so that's that's our process that's our seven step process if you like um for a particular program that we that we do and we then know those numbers because we know that if we want to get 11 people 
onto the onto that aspect of it we need to get 70 people expressing an interest via linkedin because we know that leads to half of them um, registering on zoom and then about 30 will attend the event itself and then through our follow-up activities that means that we will we will end up hopefully getting 11 people on so we know our numbers and that's that's what this is about is trying to get to that point where we know the process and we know that we know the numbers and you can of course extend that so that you know i'm extending the lead generation process in through to the sales aspect of it as well there and of course we can there are crms that we can use you know hubspot or pipe drive or various various others there there are you know obviously lots lots out there they'll all help to do this but if you don't have your process mapped out at the beginning in the sort of way that I've just described, then you won't be able to get the best out of those CRMs. If you do, and then you use the CRM and you actively monitor things, then you'll get some fantastic information out of it because essentially you'll be able to measure your return on investment for the particular activities that you're that you're doing. But then, of course, you can say, well, it's working. You know, if I go back to if I go back to this one, maybe um, we're having a big dropout from step five to step six. So we might want to then focus and go, okay, what can we do to improve that? Why is it? Is it because we're not doing it very well? Um, or, you know, are we doing it at all? Um, or is it because we're not doing it very well? How could we improve that? So we can pick uh, spot areas where we might want to focus. And all of those, those CRMs as, as well will enable you to then essentially get a view of your pipeline in terms of a, a, of a value, a forecast value of what's of the business that's likely to be coming through because you can assign probabilities then to people at the different stages of that pipeline. And once you know a value of the sale at the end of it, you can have foresight or a forward view of your of your pipeline itself and that of course is that's the holy grail really if you can get to that point then fantastic you can link it into your cash flow forecasts then as well and you've got a really good process to go through so that may sound for for some of us we'll be doing a lot of these things already for other of us others this will sound like a, a, a big step to try and try and get to so the thing really for all of us the challenge if you like that we're that we're setting is to think think about that think about what might be relevant to you but but if you if you focus on identifying one key lead generation tactic that either you're not doing that or that you are doing but you could do better that if you did it really well would make a big impact on your business pick that then determine what really well looks like and map out a simple process like I've done in terms of the number of steps and you can you can have your little measures as to what output you're looking for at each step but why you're doing each step as well but then implement and monitor so if you pick one one as aspect one tactic and follow those steps just map it out and then just try it for a little while see it see your numbers see what works see what doesn't then that's the challenge really that we're that we're setting in terms of thinking for this month so that's all that I wanted to say on that. I think you've heard enough of enough of me. That's enough enough education for or spouting from me. What I'd like to do now is to hand over to Jenny uh, from Chrysalis, who's going to take that concept a little bit further in the lines of her business and in particular referral marketing. So if if referrals are one of the key tactics for you, then Jenny's going to help you to think about how you can do that really well. So Jenny, over over to you. Good morning. Thank you, Kevin. Music to my ears, everything that you have just said. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So uh, good morning, everybody. Jenny Henderson from Chrysalis Business Support. And I, as Kevin said, I'd love to uh, just talk to you about how working together helps us go farther and how we can enhance our business by referrals. So I wanted to just pick up on the BizSmart manifesto before I went any further, because uh, one of the things that BizSmart say is if you want to go quick, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that really is one of the premise of referral marketing. Referral marketing is a team sport. You can't do it on your own. You need people around you. Uh, so it's not a solo sport. So this is an ideal opportunity for you to be looking at who do you want to have around you a scale up club. You've got an ideal opportunity here of people who could potentially be part of your network and potentially help you to build that word of mouth and those referrals and help you to go further by going together. 
So what is word of mouth? Well, it is simply what people are saying about your products or services. And the word of mouth plan has that effective message delivered through your key contacts to your target market. So what do you want to be known as? What do you want people to be saying about you? And how is that message being transmitted when you're not even in the room? Um, I used to go networking and people used to say, oh, I, I've heard of you. I know of you. Um, I've heard about you. You do that referral marketing. You help people. You must network everywhere because everybody knows you. And I was like, I don't. I don't actually. I very, I very strategically choose where I network and I choose who I build my relationships with. But my people were taking my word of mouth message out for me. So I didn't have to. They were transmitting it for me even when I wasn't in the room. And as soon as they met, people met me, they, th they thought they knew me, which was quite scary on some aspects. Um, but thankfully, it was always with a positive smile that people had heard about me. So that was good. Quick thing, just a quick message. I know you probably have heard about this and I'm sure Bismarck have talked about uh, working with the Y. If no one's heard of the Simon Sinek video working with the Y, please do Google it. It's 16 minutes of genius uh, talking about the golden concentric circles. People don't care what you do or how you do it. They care about why you do it. And this is, again, a key important element of referral marketing is making those emotional connections with people so that they can be they're in they're, they're excited to take that word of mouth message out for you. They're actually they want to take that because they've connected with you at the why level. Um, so just Google Ted, Simon Sinek and spend some time doing that. But what I want to talk about the majority of today is how do we build that referral team around you? How do we go out and make those connections? So you may not be able to see on the screen, but each one of these little blue dots is a smiley face and it represents your network and it represents everybody that you know. So whether that's the people in this room, whether it's the people that you go networking with, your suppliers, your clients, everybody, your friends, your family, um, people that you've just met, everybody is represented by a little smiley dot on there representing everybody that you know. And what referral marketing is all about is starting to identify who you need to bring into your inner circle and who you need to bring in. And there are actually eight different sources of referrals. Now, one of the source of referrals is clients. And most businesses build a client referral strategy. And, and that's great. And there's very successful client referral strategies going on. But people think that that's the only referral strategy that they can do, that they can just ask their current clients, who else do you know that might want to do business with me? And would you be able to pass on my details? Clients are a good source of referrals, but they're not the best source of referrals. Your best source is what we call the contact sphere. And your contact spheres are people that complement but don't compete with you, but are looking for the same target market. So you can create a symbiotic relationship with them because you're looking for the same types of clients but they don't compete with you they complement you so you can build that business together and from that contact sphere we will then identify people that can come into our personal power team and when you get into the personal power team those are people where you start to create strategies around how you're going to find referrals for each other and you're doing things together you're sharing people's their social media you're going to events together you're doing lots of different things and it's about creating that strategy and that tactic around it and from there we're then looking at the people that eventually become our referral partners and they start to become we start to create really deep relationships with them and that they could go out and sell my business as well as I could go out and do it myself and I could sell their business as well as I could do it them, uh, as they, well as they could do it because I've spent that time developing that relationship with them understanding what the pain points are understanding what the objections that the clients would have that I could help to overcome so if we then turn that on its head, it would be about getting to know these people better. So about really deepening those relationships, but only with a small number of people. You don't need very many people to build a very strong referral marketing relationship with. So what we're eventually doing is that we're actually putting these people in the middle and we're working with them and they are taking our message out to our target and our prospects. And those targets and prospects are coming to us via our referral source or partner back in. And if you then transferred that around and you had your referral source, you would be doing the same to them, going out to your prospects and seeing whether or not there's any opportunities. Now, a lot of people say to me, this is great, Jen, but, you know, referrals can't be predicted or you can't actually, you know, we don't know when a referral is coming in. And I challenge you on that. And I say you are wrong because we can start to predict referrals if we put the right strategy in place. And if we know what tactics we're doing and we're doing it with the right people and we're developing the right systems, you can actually start to predict how long a referral will then come to you. So I just wanted to put some things. What could we do together here at Scale Up Club today?
So we all here, we're all here, we're all here to, to, to work together. This is another networking event in itself as well. You're a way to go into breakout rooms and start to get to know people that you may not know, or you may be in a room with people that you've already met before, but you don't know them well. But I want you to think about over the course of the next month, who could you help? Somebody in your network that you've built a relationship with, what could you do to help them over the course of the next month? What marketing support do you have available that you can send to them that they could share out on your behalf or that you could ask for them to provide to you so that you can share out? So a couple of things that I do is obviously I make sure that I share my the Scale Up Club on my LinkedIn out to my network so that people know when that's coming up. I put people in my newsletters, I put the event in my newsletter so that when I'm sending my, my monthly newsletter out to people, they know what events are coming up that I would be recommending and promoting. So how do we start to make this part of your strategy? So what actions will you commit to? You know, make sure that you're attending Scale Up Club. Perhaps you might be wanting to invite somebody to the next Scale Up Club that you can bring along with you, that you can give into that relationship. Be active on the LinkedIn Scale Up group so that we're sharing and we're developing those relationships. Kevin might, uh, you know, look for people that are coming on Scale Up Radio that you could actually help and, and actually come on there. Or you might know somebody that would be interesting for Scale Up Radio and you could introduce them into Kevin and Caroline so that they can interview them and put that in. And these are all ways that you're able to build that relationship with people and put good credit into your bank account of referrals ready for when you need to withdraw it. So what's the purpose of referral marketing? Well, it's all about getting as high up the sales process as possible because with referrals, we know we've got a better chance of conversion. What do we need to do? It's about getting those right people in your concentric circles. It's about training and educating them on what it is that you're looking for, the type of business you want, so that they're bringing you the right type of referrals. And then it's about feedbacking to them that actually that was a great referral or it wasn't quite a good referral and this might make a better one for you in the future. So ladies and gentlemen, with referral marketing, it's all about going deep, not just wide. I guarantee you, you know the people that you can start to build a good referral relationship with. You don't need to put any more people in the top of the funnel. Start to think about who you already know that you can actually start building and deepening those relationships with. So I'm aware that I've gone quickly over time, but as you know, I can talk about this subject for ages. So thank you very much for listening and I look forward to catching up with you later. Sorry, I was on mute. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Jenny. Really, really good, uh, really good session. And um, you know, I highly recommend Jenny. We work we work closely with with Jenny, and um, she's helped us with a number of our activities. So um, ab absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Pete is also somebody and, and that helps us a lot and looks after our podcast, Scale Up Radio, which is one of our one of our lead generation tactics. And Pete, I'd like to introduce you, please, to to talk about lead generation from your perspective. Okay, um, thanks very much, um, Kevin. Uh, I really do feel like the dancing monkeys that came on after the Beatles when they first appeared on Ed Sullivan coming on after Jenny, uh, but I will, I, will do, I will do what I can. Uh, my name is Pete Morgan. My company is Monkey Pants Productions and we help businesses and individuals get into the world of podcasting, whether it's through education or write up to um full podcast production so about two and a half years ago kevin got in touch uh, with me after seeing me speak at a, 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 a networking event and said that he wanted to start a podcast called scale up radio now my form of lead generation regarding monkey pants productions absolutely worked perfectly because my lead generation is down to those kind of appearances and uh, the webinars and the workshops. It's its introducing people to podcasting rather than assuming people know what it's all about. It's, it's educating them as to what it is and the power of the podcast. Uh, and clearly something that I'd said, I think the one that Kevin saw was 10 questions everybody has about podcasting or 10 questions about podcasting and I answered those. Yep, yeah, I think that's what it was. Okay. Um, so Kevin and I had a conversation about what he wanted the podcast to be. And it's a great um, idea for a business podcast. It is to speak to business owners uh, or on a monthly basis, we would have a, a panel discussion to, in the panel discussion, talk about an aspect of business 
uh, being a business owner, uh, but on the one-to-one -one interviews to hear that person's scale-up journey, to hear where they started, where they are now, how they got to it, how much of it was planned, how much of it was just blind luck and what the lessons that they've learned, the challenges they've faced so that when people come away from it, they have learned something. And that is where podcasting has to live within your lead generation, within your, your sales and marketing funnel. If you are going to do a podcast, there's got to be some value for the listener. There has got to be something that I'm either going to learn or I'm going to be entertained by, or is going to change my life in some way. Because people listen to podcasts for one reason and one reason only, and that is because it makes their lives better in some way. So whether or not you're listening to um, a baking podcast, and there's some excellent ones out there uh, because you want to be better at baking and you like these presenters, whether you listen to uh, an interview podcast uh, with a famous person interviewing another famous person and you enjoy that and that makes you laugh or smile or think, or whether you listen to Scale Up Radio and learn business lessons and become a better business owner um, or a better business person because of the things that you've heard in Scale Up Radio. So this is the Scale Up Radio has been going since about the beginning of 2019, uh, I seem to remember now. Yeah, so it's about two and a bit years uh, that the Scale Up Radio has been going and thousands of people have jumped onto the Scale Up Radio uh, bandwagon. They have joined in. And one of the reasons that they do it is because it's free and because they get value out of it. But one of the other main reasons that they do, and this kind of ties in with what Jenny's been saying as well is that kind of connection that people make with Kevin. Now, I'm going to say nice things about Kevin now, so he may well get embarrassed. I think Kevin's got a great voice. I worked in radio for 30 years and I met people who I, I'd rather have my dog on the radio than this person. But Kevin is not that. Kevin has got such a warmth in his voice. And it is that, I think, that is one of the key selling points of Scale Up Radio. And it's the same with anything, whether you're doing podcasting, whether you want to do vlogs, and that's fine. I'm not anti-video. I just think podcasting is a better way of getting your message across because of this, because it ties in with radio a lot. Now, think back to when we were all younger, those heady days. Some of us have to think back a little bit longer than others. And you think about the breakfast show presenter that you would listen to in the morning. So for some people, it would have been um, Chris Evans on Radio 1. For some, it was Simon Mayo. For some, it would have been uh, whoever was local to you. So growing up in Manchester, it was a guy called uh, Dave Ward on Piccadilly 261. That was when it was on shortwave. Uh, Simon Bates. But you made that connection with that radio presenter. So the one that probably stands out for me in my kind of late teens, early 20s, was when Chris Evans was on Radio 1. Now, if I'd have seen Chris Evans in the street, I would have greeted him as if I knew him because I did. But he doesn't know me, he doesn't know me from Adam. And the, the loyal listeners to a business podcast that is giving value, that is consistent in its output, make that connection. There will be hundreds, thousands of people out there who see Kevin as the expert on scaling up your business, as the voice of expertise in being a business owner. And it's because he's got that warmth of voice, because he's publishing on a, on a regular basis, and because he's giving value in his content. And the construction of that that the podcast episode and the, pod, the podcast as a whole that we've put together with Scale Up Radio, that is what has created that connection, that um, bond between the listener and the presenter. They trust Kevin. If Kevin went on in an, a future episode and said, you know what, this is what you should do, everybody. You should, everyone should make sure you've got a bowl of bananas in your business. I guarantee you there would be hundreds of business owners who'd be like, let's put bananas 
in the office because Kevin has told us to do it. That's the connection that you get with podcasting. And that is how you get more people coming in. Can you draw a direct line from your podcast to, uh, to new clients? Not necessarily, but you can absolutely influence that funnel that leads to lead generation. Okay. I think that's my, uh, that's my time done. I've probably gone over again, so apologies Brilliant. about that. No, that's that, that's great. Thank you, Pete. And um, yeah, thank you for those flashing words. I do remember Pete telling me right at the very beginning that he thought I got a great voice for Midnight Radio. Which, you have! Which which I took to mean that I, could, I put people to sleep. But, no, uh, not at all. You have got... I mean, if you did something like The Quiet Storm, genuinely, oh, it'd, it'd be so popular. It'd be brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Right. Thank you very much, Pete. And And genuinely, you know, Pete makes that whole process... Of running podcasts so easy um you know i or really uh, you know i don't have to do any of the hard work he does all of the difficult technical stuff makes uh, makes me sound better than that i am but equally make, importantly makes the guests sound sound really good as well um but does all the publishing to the right to the right places so makes it very easy and it is genuinely you know you you might think as pete said it's hard sometimes to track direct sales from something like uh, like a podcast and it is one of those farming activities more than one of those targeted hunting activities however if you think about it i get to sit down for an hour each week with a great business owner so it's actually doing both it's doing a bit of that targeted activity as well as uh, the, the hunting so do seriously consider podcast but it's a it's a great example of if you want to do something do it well you know it, it you know we could have played at it um but we decided fairly on well, once we once we did once we worked out how to do it we we decided we were going to put some effort into it and do it as well as we as well as we could and i think that's important it is across is it 49 countries or something now pete uh yes it maybe. is well i've got the i've actually yeah. just got the latest it, stats it, in front of me so i think it is i think it's about 40 odd countries yeah yeah so so lots of lots of benefits to it so um, returning back then um, to, to the main session, so that, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Pete and and Jenny, for that. Some really, uh, really, really good insights within that. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into those breakouts, 